Retail Marketing for America's Retail Services, and with us this morning is Melanie Gladwell, Head of Flexible Workplace Solutions of the Americas. Good morning. Good morning. So great to have you. It's really great to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And also Amanda Murray, Director of Strategy and Operations for Workplace Strategy Solutions. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. First ICSC. Oh, wow. That's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> You too? Yeah, yeah, same. Oh, so how's the energy? What are you feeling so far? Do you like it? So I love it. And, you know, out of the, I don't know, was it 35, 40,000 people here, I ran into a former colleague of mine from about 20 years ago. Wow, so, small yeah, world, small really. World. Big, big yet small. Yes, mm -hmm. I think we have around 37,000 people at the show wow. today. So yeah. that's incredible. Right. And how is your first ICSE going? It, it's been great. I moderated a panel this morning um, focusing on the co-working craze and it was it was well attended. I think people are really interested in this space. So it was a good first um, take at, at ICSC and what, what people are here to learn about. Yes, and I was there and I have to say 9 a.m. at a packed house on a Monday morning <laughs> after a, probably what was a big night for everybody getting together. So yeah. pretty awesome. And let's talk Thank more about you. that in a little while. Yeah. Um, but Melanie, first let's shift and talk about your new role of, as head of workplace strategy and solutions and um, what your vision is for the future. Sure. So um, I joined the company just about two months ago now and I'm super excited to be able to be part of a global uh, real estate services firm mm -hmm. and bring my 20 plus years of experience in the flexible workplace industry and kind of merge those two um, at a time when technology is really driving the demand and the shift on how uh, flexible workplace plays a role now in commercial real estate. And so um, the way that we see our offering coming together is really a technology meets hospitality uh, offering that really uh, then is packaged within a real estate setting. And so being able to meet customer demand um, and manage all of the emerging enterprise trends that we're seeing right now with providing a new, a new type of workplace um, and leveraging the assets that Cushman has, I think is going to really be special. You know, when we think about the new workplace, it is a technology enabled one that provides amenities of hospitality and uh, wellness and right. community and culture. And I think that we have a really compelling way to do that through strategic partnerships and partnering with best in class providers in all of those areas. Well, we're really excited to have you at Cushman and Wakefield. I know you're a few months in and getting your feet wet and, and starting to get into um, everything you've got. And um, we're really excited to Thanks. be able to have that, um, that expertise now with, with our company. Great. And so Amanda, tell us more about the panel session. So you were chatting about co-working and the retail space. How does co-working affect retail? Well, co-working and retail actually, it's a, it's a huge shift in terms of demand and what people are seeing. Uh, there were some stats that just came out where it's expect co so co-working within a retail space is expected to increase by about 25 percent up in you know year over year up until about 2023. Oh, wow! So it's it is shifting the the dynamic is shifting the need is shifting and I had um, two amazing guys on the panel. It was Preston Pesic from Spacious and um, Justin Stewart from Industrious, mm -hmm. and both of them were really talking about the differences in their their business offering and how they utilize retail to um, kind of provide to the to the demand which is very high yeah and I know you polled the audience when you first took the stage yeah. you want to tell us about what you learned yes I I always like to have a feel of who we're talking to and, and I'm and I'm glad I did because you know the first question I asked is who works at a co-working or flex office location you saw a couple hands and then the next one was who's planning on it and a few more hands went up but when I asked about who here is a landlord or an investor who's looking or thinking about um, building out their space if we're in a flex capacity? Like so many hands went up, yeah. it was crazy. I mean, it was it was a great indicator of um, changes to come, and that people are really interested about learning about the space. And I think one of the one of the biggest things that we're learning is um, there has there's big education that has to occur because mm -hmm. our our topic was called the co-working craze, but right. we started it off by saying. Co-working is really only one facet of this. It's really about, um, you know, it's it's really about a flexible working environment and what and everything that goes on beyond that and below that. And so, um, the education is is still there's a lot to be had there. A lot a lot that we can do there. And um, so I was interested to see see how many people um, were just keen to learn more about it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I 
deal with retail trends or brokers. You know, I'm really entrenched in a lot of different content, but I have to say I learned so much from your panel just in utilizing F&B and restaurants for co-working space and yeah. how a mall is so important for utilizing co-working space to bring amenities to yeah. those workers. So there's really a lot of different product types within retail that are taking hold of the co-working craze and starting to benefit from it. Absolutely. And I think that it's interesting because Spacious has a bit of a, a different model where they're utilizing um, kind of pop-up locations in, retails, mm -hmm. uh, in retail and also restaurants. So a lot of restaurants wouldn't open until about five. They had all this underutilized time. And so, you know, you look at it up from that lens, which is a smaller scale, but, but equally as important as then you've got the industrious that are building out full-fledged um, offerings within a mall and they're wildly successful. People, it's funny, it's like people want to go back to the mall to work. Did you ever think you'd be saying that sentence? Like, let's go right. to the mall to go do work? Right. Just going to go to the office go to the and mall. maybe stop at a store along the way. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sure all the retailers are loving that, being people. Friday paycheck comes through. Oh, you just happened to pass one of your favorite. That things. makes a lot of sense. And it does. It does. So. Great. I think there's always a question on, you know, how many different providers can there be in this space? Mm -hmm. And I always describe it as, you know, people choose where they work, what, what kind of flex office they want, it kind of like how you choose your gym. And it's all about, you know, are these my people? You know, is this my tribe? Is right. this where I want to spend my time? And I think it was Justin who was talking about, you know, think of all the different hotel brands there are. Um, you choose it based on your comfort level mm -hmm. and knowing, is this where I can be productive? Is this where I can be social? And people want to work where they live and live where they work. And so I think there's room to grow and, um, you know, sky's the limit. Absolutely. And I know at the panel session, they were talking about the difference between the Ace Hotel and the Ritz Carlton and right. people that are going to the Ritz don't want to go to the Ace, but they're at the Ace right. for a reason because they're looking for those amenities and that sort of tribe that feeling that you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, you know, it's like where, where, you, where you know the maitre d' at a restaurant or the concierge, you know, and they walk in and you get greeted by name. That's what people are looking for in a workplace environment these days. Well, that's right. so interesting. Justin was saying that when they first launched in Chicago in 2013, I believe, there were three um, competitors, three co-working, flex working competitors. And now there's over 87, I believe, is, was the number. Wow. Uh, yeah, it was something around those numbers. And that's just, that's crazy. I mean, in Chicago alone. So think about all the different options you have. It, it really is like the gym mentality of what kind of environment do I want to put myself in? Where do I want to go? Where do I want to spend, spend my time? And you know, WeWork is always a big name that you hear, but there's so many different options out there depending on your right. needs as a client. So. Well, it sounds like it's grown exponentially over the last five to seven years, but co-working started in 1970s, right? Yeah. I think you mentioned. Did. Yeah, and I think, you know, some of what we'd like to do as we define our flexible workplace offering for Cushman and Wakefield is kind of dispel some of these myths that are out there mm -hmm. and, and have an education process. And Amanda talked about one in that co-working is just one membership type within the flexible workplace ecosystem. Um, but then, you know, the, the second comes in that, that I always think of is, um, is how people are talking about um, is it a membership? Is it a licensing agreement? Is it a sublet? You know, what does this look like? And so we really hope to be able to shed some light on that. Well, it sounds like there's a lot that can happen for the future of co-working, especially in, in just in those memberships alone, but across the board. So it's a really exciting time. Thank you both for being with us. Thank really you. appreciate it. Yeah. And thanks for tuning in. Check back throughout the day. We'll be coming to you live from ICSE Recon 2019. I'm Alana Leffler, and that's